Holmes, what happened? I feel deathly. And you look it. Let me examine you. Please don't tell me that you've returned to your old habits. The pupil is dilated. The temperature appears to be normal. The pulse, around 50 beats per minute. But you're dying, Holmes. Your pulse rate is dropping. We need to get you to the hospital immediately. The antidote? <laughs> Give it to me. The antidote? You mean that you're poisoned? No. Please. Here, drink it all. Don't tell me that you did this to yourself. Hemlock and the Tura. I was compelled to. Holmes, imagine if I'd not returned home when I did. What might have happened? <laughs> I knew that you would. Mr. Holmes, Inspector Lestrade is here to see you. Mr. Holmes is unable to see anyone at the moment. He is unwell. A good day, Inspector. Ah, Mr. Holmes. I'm glad to find you here. I need your help. This is a strange one. We have brought in two young bankers from the city, sons of lords, members of the chamber, and so on and so forth. They were found stranded in a rowing boat that was drifting on the Thames. A romantic escapade with an unhappy ending, Lestrade. What? Well, yes, they were both in the buff, but uh, what? As I said. And they were tied together. You are lacking in imagination, Inspector. Well, no, I'm not. Anyway. There was a banner flapping about in the boat with the RMS Oceanic printed on it and signed by the Merry Men. The Oceanic? Isn't that the largest steamer ever built? Yes. And these two young banker chaps are sons of the owners of the White Star Line, the company that built it. There are rumours of corruption. I'm not interested in politics, Lestrade. I'll keep it, then. Here's another one that's a bit more complex and maybe to your liking. It's a murder, but we're unable to find any weapon. We haven't touched anything. It's at the Roman Baths in Strand Lane. A murder, a vanishing weapon, the Roman Baths. That's for us. Watson, fetch your hat. With a dreadful murder. The body of Sir Rodney Bentcliffe is still in the steam room. It has not been touched, per your usual instructions, Mr. Holmes. I shall be waiting for you here, but please hurry. Are you able to identify the men who were with the victim in the steam room? Yes. The manager of the bath, Sir Gregory Pitkin, a lad from the city council, Garrow, and an archaeologist by the name of Blinkhorn. I think the plump one, Garrow, did it. He doesn't seem right in the head. Well, we shall see. You found no murder weapon? No, and that's why I called you. All three witnesses and the victim were locked in when the murder occurred, and they remained so until we got here. We even had to pick the lock to enter. I see. Was there anyone else here? Apart from those gentlemen in the steam room? Yes, a Mr. Phillips. He was the one who called the police. He will be able to give you more details. Good day to you, Mr. Phillips. 
My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my colleague, Dr. Watson. Would you be so kind as to answer our questions? Certainly, sir. Please tell us the chain of events from the start of your day. Everything that you can remember. The slightest detail may be of importance. Very well, sir. I came in at 6.30 this morning, and I opened the baths. I made sure that the room was clean, and I prepared the towels. The brazier was still burning. There was a fire burning all night? Yes, Sir Gregory ordered me to light the brazier yesterday. It takes some time until the room is fully heated. The gentleman had a meeting at 9 o'clock this morning. I wanted everything to be perfect. They'd been in the steam room for 20 minutes when I suddenly heard shouting. I ran to the door, but it was closed. I couldn't open it. So I ran out to the street to call for the police. One constable came up, and then there were others, and they picked the lock. Then Inspector Lestrade came along, and he told us that nothing should be touched. Hmm. Did you receive any other visitors this morning? No one. Until these gentlemen arrived. Sir Gregory was the first. And then, while we were discussing work details, Sir Rodney and Mr. Blinkhorn arrived, and Mr. Garrow followed. And what happened after that? I waited until it all entered the steam room, then I returned to the hall. The changing room door was open, so I should hear if they needed anything. You would have heard if someone had entered or left the steam room? Certainly, sir. These doors make a lot of noise. Any progress, Mr. Holmes? These baths are becoming sinister. What should we do next, Holmes? Well, the steam room's on the other side, Mr. Holmes. Well, the steam room's on the other side, Mr. Holmes. These clothes belong to one of the suspects from the steam room. Clothes belonging to one of the suspects. Expensive clothes belonging to one of the men from the steam room. Unopened. It was intended to be enjoyed after the steam session. An ice bucket to keep the champagne chilled. Champagne for a special occasion. with a peculiarly Roman piquancy. Like the one you almost had an hour ago. Let us forget about that. I should check this blood sample at Baker Street. This key was covered in blood. I should ask Phillips about it. There was only one hit from the weapon. It pierced the right eye straight through to the brain. Death would have been instantaneous. Hmm. 
The wound should not have bled so profusely. This pool is rather large. Look, Watson. He was wearing a ring. He very likely removed it before the steam session. Some dirt or earth. I'll take a sample. Well, death is very recent. Between 30 minutes to one hour ago. I think we have found all that we can here, taking into consideration the abysmal lighting. Constable, we have finished with the body. We don't have many leads here. What concerns me is that we still have to find the murder weapon. Mr. Holmes? Please have the body removed without disturbing anything else in the room. All right, Mr. Holmes. I was wondering, Holmes, it's fairly reckless to carry out a murder inside a closed chamber. Why do you suppose they did it? There are a great many possibilities. But the murderer was in a hurry. Or he is an artist. Or a ghost. Or he wanted to ensure that I'd be brought in on the case. Probably the latter. You are ridiculous. Do you know that? One lens is cracked, probably due to the temperature of the brazier. These lenses are for myopia. The wearer is short-sighted. The brazier is still burning. The heat here is extreme. It is too hot. I cannot reach into it. I will need something to pick up this melted metal. 